Hey guys, welcome to this Flutter app development series where we are creating that wallpaper app which no one wants. So in the last two videos, we implemented this home page where users can see all the wallpaper categories. And we also added this category wallpaper class using which we can navigate users to new page when they tap on any of the wallpaper categories. And this new page just displays a list view of all the wallpapers of that specific category. In this video, we are finally going to implement a way for users to set any of these images as wallpaper. So let's get started. My first step to implement this will be to wrap the cache network image widget in an ink response widget. The on tap property of this widget will help us to detect when users tap on any of these images. Now you might have seen that when you try to set an image as wallpaper using the native wallpaper tool. You are given an option to choose whether you want to set it as home screen, lock screen or both screens. So we will also try to implement same thing. And to show users with these three options, I am gonna use Cupertino Action Sheet. Cupertino Action Sheet is basically an iOS style dialog which slides in a list of options from the bottom of the page from which users can pick one option. So to display this action sheet, we will first have to define it. So I'll create a new variable here called action sheet which will hold a reference to a Cupertino action sheet. For this we will have to import cupertino.dart package at the top. For the title property of this action sheet I'll use a text widget which will display the string set as. And then to define the options in this action sheet we will have to use actions property. This property needs a list of widgets. So I'll create a list here and in this list I'll add three Cupertino action sheet action. Each of these actions will need an on press function and a child widget. For the child property I'll use text widgets displaying home, lock and both. And for the on screen property I'll use a empty function for now. So now that we have defined what our action sheet will contain, let's display it. For that we will have to use show cupertino model popup. This function needs a build context and a builder function. For context, we can pass in the context that we get in from item builder of current list view builder. For the builder, I'll create a function which takes context as an input and returns the action sheet that we just created. And now if I save this code and try to click on any of the images, you can see that we get this pop-up with the three options that we specified. Right now nothing will happen if I click on these options because the on press callback is empty. So I'll quickly add navigator dot of context dot pop so that at least the pop-up will go away when we click on any of the options. And let's also pass in a string to this pop method which will indicate the options name. Basically, whatever object you pass in here will be returned by SoCupertino modal popup when the option is selected by users. So I'll store the output of SoCupertino modal popup in a variable called option. And since this returns a future, I'll add the await keyword so that the execution awaits here till we get a selection from users. And to make this await, we will have to mark the whole on press function as async. Now to see which option was picked, I'll first make sure that option is not null and then I'll put it in a debug print. This if check is necessary because if user dismisses the pop-up without selecting any of the options, we will get null as written from show cupertino model pop-up. And now if I save this code and check the output in debug console after selecting any option from the action sheet. We should see the correct option getting printed in there. And looks like this is working as expected. Now the next thing is to actually set the wallpaper to appropriate screen depending on the user input. For this I'll be using a package called wallpaper manager. This package basically wraps the native android wallpaper manager. So let's go to installing tab and copy this dependency and let's go back to pubspec yaml of our app to add this in the dependencies section and let's save this file to run pubgit. Now before we start using wallpaper manager, let's do some refactoring. It is possible that in future 
we might want to allow users to set wallpaper by tapping at multiple places from different pages. So it would be great if we could just call one function which will take care of handling user input and setting the wallpaper. And for that, what I'll do is I'll move this whole code from on tap function to some common location so that we can call it from anywhere from our app. So let's create a file called utilities.dart and in this file I'll create a new function called set wallpaper and then I'll paste the code that I had copied from on tap. Let's import the cupertino.dart package and now for context I'll add a parameter to this function of type build context and its name will be context. So basically callers of this function will have to provide a build context. As we have a await here, set wallpaper will have to be marked as async and its return type will be future of void. And now we can call this function from on tap of the ink response by passing in the current context as input. We will have to import the utilities.dart to use set wallpaper. And let's also add await here. And if I save and check this code, it should still work. Now as we have added a new package, we will have to restart the debugger. We will be using two more packages for this whole wallpaper setting code. So the first one is flutter cache manager. I'll quickly add this dependency to our pubspec file. And the second one is image cropper. So I'll add this dependency as well. I'll explain why we need them as we go but for now let's just add them so that we don't have to restart the debugger every time. For the image cropper we need to have some additional changes in android manifest.xml. Basically we just have to add this activity element in that xml. So let's just copy this and go to android manifest. Make sure that you go to the manifest file located under android slash app slash src slash main and not the one under debug or profile. In this file just go to the existing activity tag and collapse it and then add the copied code below that. And that is it. Now let's start the app again. Ok so the app is running now and let's go to set wallpaper function. Here we have passed some string to pop method to inform which option user has tapped from the action sheet. But I am not a huge fan of using strings to indicate returns, mainly because it is very easy to make mistake while typing out strings which makes it hard to debug such issues later. So instead of strings I will create an enum called set wallpaper as and this enum will have three types namely home, lock and both. Basically by creating this enum, I am making sure that we can use only these three values for a variable of type set wallpaper as. Now I can replace these strings with appropriate enum values. So home will become set wallpaper as dot home, lock will become set wallpaper as dot lock and both will become set wallpaper as dot both. And now I can also change the type of this option to set wallpaper as. Inside this if check, I'll first remove this debug print statement. And now we can use the wallpaper manager from wallpaper manager package. This class has a method called set wallpaper from file, which needs two arguments. First is the file part to the image which we want to set as wallpaper, and second one is the wallpaper location. Wallpaper location, this name is a bit confusing, but this parameter is used to specify where this wallpaper needs to be set. It can be home screen, lock screen or both screens. So let's take a look at these parameters one by one. For the file path, we basically need to get the path to our wallpaper image. But if you look at the code in category wallpaper.dart, you'll find that we don't actually store these wallpapers. We just display them on the fly. So to solve this, it is very natural to think that let's add some code to download the image to some local storage and then pass the file part of that downloaded image to wallpaper manager. You are not totally wrong if you are thinking on these lines, but let's think over this a little. How do you think these images are displayed in our app in the first place? Even to display these images, our app must be downloading them somewhere, right? 
Wouldn't it be great if we could just use the part to that file and pass it to wallpaper manager. And indeed, cached network image stores a copy of these wallpapers in the default cache location and we can easily get the part to that cached image. For that, we just need to know the URL of required image. So I'll first add one more parameter to our set wallpaper function of type string called URL. Then from on tap of ink response, we can pass in the URL of current image using the same line which we added for cache network image. I'll quickly add curly braces here so that these parameters become named parameters and I'll make necessary changes in the on tap function too. Now in this if block, before we call the set wallpaper from file, let's first get the cached image. For that I'll create a new variable called cached image and to get the image I'll use the default cache manager. This comes from the flutter cache manager package that we added earlier. On this I'll call get single file and I'll pass in the URL to this method. To keep it simple you can think of default cache manager as a big key value map where each and every cache data is stored as value with an unique key. So in case of cache network image, the cached image is stored with its unique value being the URL of that image. Now let's add an if check to make sure that we actually got the image. Oh and I forgot to add the await keyword here. And now if the cached image is not null, we can call set wallpaper from file with its first argument as cached For the second parameter, we have to specify the screen on which we want to set the wallpaper and we already have that option stored in this option object. But we cannot directly pass it to this method because if we check the definition of this method in wallpaper manager package, you will find that the second argument is an integer. Now I don't know why the package owner decided to make it an int because it is very easy that someone might try to pass in an invalid value here. The only three valid values are 1, 2 and 3 for which the owner has created three constants called both screens, home screen and lock screen. So now we somehow have to convert our set wallpaper as enum values to these three integers. And to do that I'll create a const map called set as. This map will basically map each value of our enum to corresponding value from wallpaper manager package. And once this is done, I can index into this map using the options that we have here. And it will return the correct value as required by the wallpaper manager plugin. You might think this is an overkill for something this simple. But trust me, it is always better to keep a clean boundary between your code and the code from a third party package. Now, the set wallpaper from file method returns result which indicates if setting of wallpaper was successful or did it fail. Again, I don't know why this package owner decided to return a string instead of returning an error code. But anyways, I'll store this returned result in a variable called result. And if result is not null, I'll print it out to the console. And now let's save and try this code. First, I'll go to the cars category and click on the first image and then on this action sheet I'll select home. Now let's open the debug console and as you can see we have this string saying wallpaper set. And if I go to the home screen of this emulator you can see that indeed the wallpaper has changed. But as you can see these wallpapers are too big and wallpaper manager is just selecting the leftmost part of the whole image. And this is where image cropper will help us. Using image cropper, we can allow users to select the part of image that they want to set as wallpaper. So to do that, we'll have to send the cached image that we get from cache manager to image cropper. So first, I'll create a variable called cropped image. And this variable will store the output from image cropper dot crop image. Crop image also returns a future, so I'll add await here. For the source path of crop image, I'll pass in cached image dot path. Now we can set some more options for this image cropper, but I'll like to show you how the default image cropper looks. 
So after this cropper is complete, I'll check if cropped image is valid. And if it is valid, then we can call set wallpaper from file from wallpaper manager. And we'll obviously have to change this cached image to cropped image. That's it. Now let's save and check how it looks in the app. So if I tap on the image and select home, we will be taken to a new page. And as you can see, we have the ability to move this image and we can also change the crop rectangle using these options. Also, there are options to rotate and scale the image. All that is good, but we just want to allow users to crop the image to a predefined rectangle. They should just be able to select what part of the image they want to display in the rectangle. So to set the rectangle size, I'll use aspect ratio property. This will be a crop aspect ratio which needs ratio X and ratio Y as inputs. Both of these are just doubles. Now I could have easily hard coded these values to 9 and 16 but mobile screens have started coming in all kinds of weird sizes and ratios. So to make sure that we set the rectangle exactly as big as the screen size, I'll use media query. Using media query, you can get the screen size of device that this app is currently running on. So for X ratio, I'll use width of this size and for ratio Y, I'll use height. And now if we select any image and go to this cropper, the crop rectangle will be of a fixed size and users can move the image to decide which part gets selected as wallpaper. And if I click done at the top, this should change the wallpaper with selected part of the image. If we go to cropper again, you can see that we still have some extra controls here. Also the color and title does not match with our app. So to change all this, we can use Android UI settings and iOS UI settings. Since I'm running this on an Android emulator, I'll use Android UI settings. Now Android UI settings has many parameters that you can control. I'll probably create a separate video on that in future. If I have already created that video, the link will be in the description. So first thing I'll change here is the toolbar title. I'll set it to crop image. Then for the toolbar color, I'll use color.blue. For color, let's import material.dart package. And at last, I'll set height bottom controls as true. So once you save this code, you will not see changes immediately because this page actually is a native android intent and not some flutter widget so let's close and relaunch the cropper and as you can see now we only have options to move the image and crop it so let's try out this on some other images to make sure that everything is working as expected Let's try to set this one on lock screen and to see that I'll have to turn off and then turn on the display ones and looks like lock screen is working as well. And finally let's check if both option is working or not. And yes this is also working. So to summarize all this, we basically get the cached image from default cache manager using the URL of that image. Then we pass the cached image to image cropper so that users can decide which part of the image they want to set as wallpaper. And once that is done, we use the wallpaper manager to set the cropped image as wallpaper. And that is all for this video. Now our app has ability to set wallpapers. And we have now modularized this wallpaper setting code so that it can be called from anywhere in our app. I hope you were able to follow along. As usual, all this code is available in GitHub repository linked in the description. So check that out if you want. That being said, thanks for watching this. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Subscribe if you think you will benefit from my future uploads. 
and i'll see you in the next one.